Hello everyone, welcome in Learn CHE. Today we are going to discuss about the first law of thermodynamics and this is very very important law when we study the thermodynamics. So in this video what we are going to study. So first we will see about the introduction of the first law of thermodynamics. We will see the definition of first law of thermodynamics in the introduction. Then we will discuss about the history, history of the heat and history of the first law of thermodynamics and about the energy. Then we will discuss about the first law of thermodynamics for a cyclic process. So here we will see that what is the first law of thermodynamics for a cyclic process and we will also see that what is the cyclic process. Then we will discuss about the first law of thermodynamics for closed system and we will also discuss about the what is a closed system. Then we will discuss about the application of first law of thermodynamics then limitation of the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. So let's start from the introduction. So what is the introduction and what is the definition of the first law of thermodynamics? Here are many definitions of the first law of thermodynamics and we will see here mainly two definitions, right? The first one is the first law of thermodynamics depends upon the law of conservation of energy. Okay, so what this law states? This law states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed during a process. Okay, so during a process energy can neither be created nor destroyed although it can be converted from one form of energy into the another form of energy. What is this mean? It means that kinetic sorry chemical energy is converted into the electrical energy and the electrical energy can be converted into the magnetic energy or we can say the mechanical energy right so this is the so it is the meaning of conservation of energy but we cannot create it or we cannot destroy it during a process right so this is the meaning of the law of conservation of energy and here the second definition is that the total energy of the universe right or isolated system must remain constant okay so what the first law of thermodynamics states that suppose we have a system here this is my system and suppose the q amount of heat lose or lost by the system okay so this q amount of heat which is lost by the system will be gained by the surrounding got it my point what i want to say means that if suppose 100 joule of energy will lose by the system then 100 joule of energy will be gained by the surrounding that's why the total energy of the universe what is the universe mainly universe is a combination of system plus surrounding so it will be must remain constant so this is the introduction of the first law of thermodynamics. I hope you understand it. What I want to say about the first law of thermodynamics. Now, now we will or we will see about the history. What is the history of the first law of thermodynamics? So in the initial stage of the thermodynamics, we did not know about the heat like what is the heat and we mainly consider heat as a calorific fluid and we like we thought that we can pour heat from one bucket to another bucket right so we were, we were treating it as a calorific fluid that's why you will see that the unit of heat is a calorie right so unit of heat is calorie and the derived unit of heat is a joule right so in the initial stage we did not know about the heat and after that when we understood about it that what is the heat then we found that heat is nothing but a form of or mode of energy means heat is a way of transfer of energy from one way to another way suppose if we want to transfer energy from this way to this one right from one stage to second stage so there is one way where we can use heat as well like we can also use work but here is one way of transfer of that energy that is our heat so that was the meaning of heat 
इन द मैक्रोस्कोपिक लेवल बट इन द माइक्रोस्कोपिक लेवल हीट इज ए डिसऑर्डर्ड सिस्टम सो वी ऑल्सो फाउंड दैट हीट इज ए वर्क एंड वर्क इज ए हीट हाउ वी नो डेट वट इज वर्क वर्क इज ऑल्सो ए फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी एंड हीट इज ऑल्सो ए फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी सो डेट्स वाई वी कॉन्क्लूड डेट हीट इज ए वर्क एंड वर्क इज ए हीट एंड दिस स्टेटमेंट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स I hope you understand this, right? So this is all about the history of the first law of thermodynamics. And in the initial stage, we did not know about the energy. Like, what is the meaning of energy? We did not know. And like, there are many scientists who were working in the different different field, and they found that if one effect is converting into the another effect suppose chemical effect is converting into the electrical effect and electrical effect is converting into the magnetic effect so there is one thing that is being conserved that is being conserved and that conserved quantity is known as the energy so that's why this energy and this law of conservation come into the picture i hope you got this point what i want to say right okay so we have discussed about the introduction we have also discussed about the history of the heat and first law of thermodynamics right now before starting the first law of thermodynamics for cyclic process i have also made the videos about the system and surrounding reversible and irreversible process types of process and specific heat if you haven't watched that video till now you can watch that video as well because your concept will be more clear after watching that videos first we see that what is the cyclic process what is the meaning of cyclic process okay so suppose there is my pv diagram okay and in this pv diagram there is one stage this one and the second stage is this one okay okay so suppose if i want to go from 1 to 2 so there is one way is that this one okay and now i want to return it from 2 to 1 so this is my another way or i can also come like that okay so what is the meaning of cyclic process is that when the system goes from 1 to 2 then it come back to 2 to 1 means the initial stage and the final stage is same is called the cyclic process and nothing else suppose in this diagram okay this is the thermal power plant okay and a closed system which i am considering right so suppose this is my first i am taking it it is my second third and fourth so here you will see that i supply some heat this is q1 i am supplying the heat to the boiler okay and the feed pump so suppose there is a water is coming into the boiler right so this from this boiler the steam is going on into the steam is going or feeding into the turbine and i am getting some work that work is w1 right okay so after that from this turbine the steam is feeding into the condenser right and what this condenser will do this condenser will condense this steam and convert into the simply it will convert into this steam into the water so this condenser will condense this steam into the water and this condenser will reject some amount of heat okay and there is a pump so suppose i supply w2 amount of work into the pump so that it can lift this water to the boiler okay so here you can see that the initial stage and the final stage is same because this process is going like that and coming to the my initial stage so we can say that this is a cyclic process i hope you got my point what i want to say now what is the first law of thermodynamics for the cyclic process so i'll tell you here so for the cyclic process what is the first law of thermodynamics the first law of thermodynamics for a cyclic process is that del q is directly proportional to the del w okay so what is the meaning of this it means that it means that del q is equal to j del w got it my point what i want to say 
so here you can see that means this proportionality sign is converted into the proportionality constant j that is called as the mechanical equivalent of heat because this w is a mechanical work suppose if this is a electrical work then we will say that electrical equivalent of heat right okay so suppose right so this is the our definition for the cyclic process or the first law thermodynamics for cyclic process here you can see one thing from this j what will be the what will what will be the unit of this j the unit of this j will be calorie per joule now here you can see that this is my very differential form right but suppose when there is many systems are working okay suppose here here is we have q1 and q2 and here is w1 and w2 then how we will write this cyclic process we can simply write this cyclic process as summation of w is equal to j summation of q and when i'll simplify this one so what i i can write i can write at w1 minus w2 is equal to q1 minus q2 so this is the first law of thermodynamics for a cyclic process i hope you understand it what i wanted to tell you now now we will discuss about the first law of thermodynamics for closed system okay and let me in the comments box what is the meaning of closed system so we have already discussed about this let me in the comments box what is the meaning of closed system okay so here we have a system right and suppose in this system i am supplying a q amount of heat and i am getting w amount of work okay so here you can see that i am supplying the heat into the system or i am adding the heat into the system that's why this q will be positive okay if suppose the system will reject heat to the surrounding so that that time q will be negative so same for the w here system is working on the surrounding okay so that's why here this w will be negative and when the surrounding is working on the system so that's time the w will be positive got it so now here you can see that we know the q that is amount of heat transfer to the system we know the w that is the amount of work done by the system on the surrounding and we know the q minus w that q minus w is a net amount of energy transfer to the system okay suppose that is delta e here i am considering is delta e but you can simply understand that that delta e is a summation of delta kinetic energy plus delta potential energy plus delta internal energy okay and for the steady state this kinetic energy and this potential energy will be zero so that's why this delta u will be equal to q minus w as simple as that you can also see in your book that there will be a very long process okay after the differentiation we will we get this point okay so i'll also explain you what is the delta u okay so this delta u is called the internal energy this delta u is called the internal energy energy and i can say change in internal energy change in internal energy q we know and w we know that i am supplying some amount of heat here and i am getting some amount of work so suppose here i am supplying the 100 joule right and i am getting this 60 joule got it now where is the 40 joule the 40 joule is here within the system and the system has stored that 40 joule and that 40 joule is nothing but the internal energy i hope you got my point what is the internal energy the definition you can see in your book there is a definition of the like the internal energy but as simple as that what is the internal energy this is a internal energy of the system so why there is a change and q and w is not like we have not written it like a change 
because this delta u is a state function and i have also made the video on state function and path function right it does not depend on the path it is a independent of path and the state function is always written as a delta and this q and w are the path function they depend on the path like how our process is going on but in the cyclic process here you can see here you can see that whether we are going from 1 to 2 okay okay so this is our one process and if we are going from 2 to 1 from this way or this way it does not make any difference in the change in internal energy it will be zero got it my point but in the case of q and w it will not because it depends on the path it depends on this path but the internal energy do not depend internal energy depend upon the this state one and state two okay so i hope you understand that what is the delta u q and w and this is our journal statement for the first law of thermodynamics here are suppose i have written it delta u is equal to q minus w right so you can also write it delta e is equal to q minus w here is one thing that when our scientists were working on the first law of thermodynamics so they have the system and that system was the steam engine that's why the journal form of the first law of thermodynamics is this you can take any other system where suppose the amount of heat here we are transferring the heat into the system in your case you can you can reject the heat from the surround uh, from the system to the surrounding okay so it may be on you like how you want to write the first law of thermodynamics okay but one one of the way is this and this is the journal way of writing the first law of thermodynamics i hope you understand it what is the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system now now we will discuss about the application of first law of thermodynamics okay so like where we can use this first law of thermodynamics first you can see in the steam engine we are we were talking about the steam engine right we can discuss here we can like the ap first application is there steam engine at heat pump okay mainly we can say that at work producing device and at the work consuming device we can use here okay could you please let me in the comments box the more application of the first law of thermodynamics this is your homework kind of let me in the comments box what is the application of the first law of thermodynamics if you will be suppose incorrect though i'll correct you okay now now what is the limitation of the first law of thermodynamics this is very very important okay first limitation is it does not say anything about the direction of the flow of heat okay so in the first law of thermodynamics you will not see or you will not talk about the direction of the heat where is it going from whether it is going from like hot to cold or cold to hot we do not discuss about it and second is it does not say anything about the spontaneity of the process okay so we do not know about the process spontaneity whether it will be spontaneous or it will not be the spontaneous okay and the, the last and very important that is heat and work are mutually interchangeable okay we have seen in our previous examples that here it is written that heat and work are the mutually interconvertible but this is not the right how it is not right so many times we see that the heat suppose we are supplying the heat to produce the work okay but the vice versa is not possible there are there are many cases where we can do it but the vice versa is not possible okay so that's why this is not the interchangeable got it and after that the second law of thermodynamics come into the picture okay after the limitation of the sec first law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics come into the picture and we will also discuss about the second law of thermodynamics i hope you understand this video if you like that video you can subscribe learn chg youtube channel you can watch our other videos as well thank you for watching